Today's story is about the mink farm that was on our my farm. Like we didn't have a mink farm, but there were mink. We had a mink farmer set up shop. Won't be complicated, but it won't be interesting either. So here's what happened. We uh, this guy this this guy approached my dad. I don't know why my dad was the guy he approached, but your dad is your dad, which is complex. Let me put some minks there. So my dad was like, okay, cool. So we cleared off some land. And he set up like these 200 cages and brought mink in. And it was a mink farm. Uh, and their mink are disgusting animals. Like they're just. I think your hatred for her is clouding your judgment. They stink. They're aggressive. They just want to fight all the time. They just rah, rah, rah. like they just bite. And if you if you're translating in his head, you get a little chip in there. Oh, that's that's the translation. It'd be fight, 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 fight. They just always wanted to, and they stunk. They, it was they're the worst animal. You know what? The president of PETA could come to if a president of PETA came down to the mink farm and met the mink, they'd be like, oh, you know what? I love animals, but not this one. This is disgusting. I I get it. Let's turn them into a coat. Now, don't you think this is going a little far? Pam Anderson herself would be, dis she'd be like, I can't deal with these. They're disgusting. I've never seen that. Okay, fine. They're a cute little animal if they're sedated. That's as much as I'll give you. I, I guess I didn't have a very good experience with the mink because they weren't ours and they just were always, so the cages, they had like their food would spill over the top and stuff that you fed them and it, and it also, that's where they, there, it was just it was gross. There's crap and food mixed in, and our cats, our like a farm cats, are like, hey, is that free food over there? Yeah, it's mixed with crap. What are you doing? I don't know. I'll just root around. I have no words. And and they got diseases, and it was just yeah, it was disgusting. Got a couple cat incidences. We I, this one time I was walking by these cats, and one of them just it just caught my eye. There's a whole bunch of them at this point in time, and it was just like this perfect circle. His face was this perfect circle. I was like, what did I just see? So I go back to this cat and he's trying to hide away. And I see that he's got this jar, glass jar around his head and it's broken off. And he's just basically like, and it's heavy and he's trying to get away from me. So he's kind of clunking his head along. So I'm like, what? So I grabbed this cat and uh, yeah, he had this, it was stuck. Like he was stuck hard. Like I was tugging at it and the whole head the whole neck of cats. And so I actually, I had to twist it off the cat's head. I'm not entirely sure what's happening right now. <laughs> it finally came off. <laughs> and I set this cat down. And it's, I mean, it's brain had been squished for, I don't know how long it had been like that. But he was just kind of like, okay. Okay, I'm never sticking my head in a jar again. Especially near the mink pens. So I had a big tomcat. Every cat I owned, I named a... I named a tiger, panther, cougar. I always named them. Well, Tommy was my first one because I was thinking Tomcat, but. Colin, that was really sweet. The Vatican sweet. <laughs> but so Panther was this this gray tabby big Tomcat uh, named Panther, and he got like he got sick. He ate something down there with those around the stupid mink cages, and he just he was frail and skinny and. This is why, as a kid, you don't want to be skinny because it, it, that's what people associate with diseased. Speak the truth, man. He looked like he was he was gonna die, and then he was all of a sudden gone one day. Yeah, I was like, oh, he died. He must have just died because he was not doing well. And then, like two or three months later, dude shows up. What? What did you just call me? And it's it's the same cat, but he does not look. He's ripped. Like three months. He I I don't even know how. He was a Mauser now. He was just. And, and strutting around he was back like no I'm and I, I knew it was Panther it's the same look but different different attitude on this cat he must have either he became an amazing Mauser and and just ate uh, ate up a fury or there's like a steroid farm nearby and he accidentally got injected or something not plausible <laughs> just juice he got juiced up not plausible somebody was juicing my cat not plausible he was massive, just huge. He, I remember this one time he was, he was walking and I was like, hey, he ignored me. 
like cats do that sometimes, right? But he, this was like a, a confident one, not a, like some cats are like, mm, I'm better than you, but in kind of a weaselly way. Uh, weasel, that's another gross animal. I'm starting to get concerned. But but this was like, I was like, hey, hey, panther, hey, here, kitty, kitty. And he just looked at me, he just gave me one of these head nods. He was just like, and then just kept walking. <laughs> it's like this, the coolest cat ever. But anyways, enough about panther. We're talking about uh, the mink. Because here's the thing. They would escape from the cages. and But they wouldn't leave. It's like, hey, you're free. Go into the forest and survive. No, they're like, no, no I'm going to hang around the farm area. And uh, yeah, so every time they got out, they weren't ours because it wasn't our mink farm. It was this other guy who was just leasing out the land. But every time they escaped, I had to go round these things up. Or at least help round up. We usually call it. Because you have to have stay in a special gloves. And no gloves. No special gloves fit these hands. <laughs> but because they would bite, just bite through regular gloves. Just, argh! So you had to have, like, he had, they had these reinforced gloves or something. I can't remember uh, all the details. Gee, this sounds like a science project. <laughs> but this one time, <laughs> my dog and I, German Shepherd, wonderful dog. Uh, wasn't a Chico, but a Shiba. Good enough. And, and Sheba was a, a, a great dog, and we would we were rounding up a mink this one time. This one mink got away and was running, and it was lot, there was pretty you know, lots of snow, so he, he was having to, to jump a lot. You knew exactly where he went. We just follow it. So Sheba and I run off to, to chase this mink down, and then we see it, and the mink just boot just boots her for the for the forest, right? Round two! And so we're we're chasing me. I'm in my winter boots, and Sheba's, you know, and we're a team going to try to get around this thing and, and catch this thing. I was I was actually just going to try to get around the other side of it and and chase it back towards because I knew the Mills. That's the family. I knew they were coming and they can deal with it. I'm not going to try to pick this stupid thing up. I hate them. And they'll bite me. You need to see a psychologist. Um, but that was the plan. I don't know if that was Sheba's plan. She, she was just like, hey, something that I can chase. <laughs> Sheba was, uh, Sheba chased everything. Sheba hated, uh, I'm getting off track a few times, I guess now. I apologize. I cannot stomach one more wild tangent or shaggy dog tail. But Sheba hated, hated skunks. Like, not, not like, oh, I hate skunks, I'm going to get away. But like, oh, I'm going to kill it. And she would, like, grab, attack a skunk. And they'd be spraying her. And she'd be like, oh, just ragdolling the skunk. <laughs> till it died even though and she knew she was gonna get stung like, we need to find out is anyone stung <laughs> maybe that's why she was she was really down with chasing the mink because they also stink a little bit would you not know skunks are immune to bee stings but we're chasing this mink <laughs> this is to me is just the funniest picture in my head and all of a sudden the mink stopped so sheba and i stopped and the mink turned around and realized that hey we're not going after her anymore so the mink started going towards us <laughs> and, and and me and Shiva were like oh oh crap and so we I started running Shiva started running and now this mink is actually this tiny little mink is chasing this nearly grown man and this German Shepherd dog that's just sad man and I remember laughing as it was chasing me I was laughing so hard because I was like this must look ridiculous but I still wasn't like, I'm not, I don't care. I'm not about to get bit by this stupid little mink. So I just kept running and Shiva and I were running. I was like, don't tell anyone, Shiva. I won't tell anybody if you don't tell anybody. Uh, and now I've, I've, uh, I've broken that promise by telling the world on YouTube and the tens of people that will watch this. He never said anything nice to you. But it actually chased us. I think we actually got to the yard. That's how far. And then the mills were there. So then he was he was within the yard anyway. That was the only plan was to get him to the yard. So back to the yard. And then they grabbed him and, and made him into a coat. So who's laughing now, mink? No, that's not true, is it? <laughs> Subscribe below. Hit the notification bell to let you know when the next... When I'm going to insult the next animal. <laughs> or whatever stories. Uh, I make fun of my kids more. People seem to like that. What did he just say? Uh, yeah, describe below. Uh, describe below. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to put a button on the end of that. Describe below something <laughs> in the comment section. Describe something. 
Uh, I might go buy a mink coat just so I can get back at as many of them as I can. You need to see a psychologist. <laughs>